Praise God. I'm Pastor Wycliffe. I want to thank God for this topic. Today I want to look at holiness. Briefly, I want to talk about holiness. Do you know what holiness means? Let me first read a scripture, then we go on. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. According to he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Praise the Lord so much. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. We should be holy. Holiness is a requirement. It's a spiritual requirement. God wants us to be holy as he is holy. Let us first go in the book of First Peter chapter 1 verse from verse 14 to 16. Get your King James Version, First Peter chapter 1 verse 14 to 16. It reads, As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. 16. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Praise the Lord. Because God is holy, we have to be holy. You know, very many people misunderstand this. They confuse holiness and righteousness. Righteousness is by faith in Christ Jesus. But holiness is by action. The moment you get saved, then you have to grow and be transformed. That's why I'm going to show you how a person can grow or can pertain or can get into what you call holiness. One of them is what we call, I've told you, holiness is by action and is a requirement. So, if you are to grow in holiness, you have to have character transformation. Another thing is what you call spiritual growth. Another thing is what you call cleansing from all filthiness. You must be cleansed from all filthiness. Another thing, we have to look at what we call the three fundamental qualities of holiness. Praise the Lord so much. I've told you it's a brief teaching, but I will be going in too much detail when we come to the topic of holiness in its length. Praise the Lord so much. So, three fundamental qualities of holiness. One of them is what we call blamelessness. Another one is what we call spotlessness. Another one is what we call recollectiveness. The moment you are spotless, without wrinkle, without blame, you are holy. Remember a person is, a man is a three-part being, is a spirit, soul, and body. Therefore, since holiness is a requirement, a person must be holy in the spirit, soul, and body. That's what the scripture says in the book of 2 Corinthians. Let us read it to clarify this. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. It is a common scripture that we normally talk about when it comes to holiness. 
Having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse our souls from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Holiness is perfected. When you are cleansed from all your filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, you are going to be holy. It is perfected in that way. When you keep yourself in the word of God, growing in the word of God, that's why we talked about speech of growth. When you're growing in the word of God, in the doctrine, when you're being corrected, re, re, uh, you are told of what to do, you are reproved, you are told what to do in righteousness, you are instructed in righteousness, you'll be perfected. In fact, when we look at holiness, is part of being perfected in Christ. Let us read a scripture which shows that the word of God makes us to be perfect, makes us to walk a life of holiness. Are you in the word of God? Do you get the word of God and walk in it? Because the moment you grow in the word of God, as this man said in the book of Psalms 119 verse 11, that I've treasured your word in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Holiness is all about not sinning against God. Holiness, it means you are like Christ. You are Christian. You are like a Christian. You have Christ-like character. Praise the Lord. Let us read that scripture. Why I'm saying that we need to keep ourselves in the word of God. To be holy. Praise the Lord. The moment you keep yourself in the Word, you will definitely become perfect and be holy. Let me read the scripture in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Praise the Lord so much. Holiness being a character trait of a person. Praise the Lord. And you know that there are three things that can define what character is. How we can tell of your character. We talk of works. Or actions or deeds. Secondly, we can also look at what you call appearance, the way how you look outside. Another one is what we can just call, we have talked of uh, appearance, we have talked of works, then words. Praise the Lord. You must be holding your words in the appearance and in the actions. Make sure that whatever you do is in line with holiness. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. According to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. So I want to encourage you my friends. Holiness is very vital and you can be able to be holy. It is very possible. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know I can be holy because Christ strengthens me and his word will always wash me. Praise the Lord. Let me read the scripture because we are a child that Jesus is going to take. Especially when we reach in the life of being blameless, spotless and without wrinkle. As I've told you, there are three qualities or fundamental qualities of holiness. In the book of Ephesians, as I'm winding up, let us read Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Let us go there. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Praise the Lord so much. 25 to 27. It says, that he might present it to himself as glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Should be holy and without blemish. 
26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So the word of God cleanses us. That's why you have to keep yourself in the true word of God. In the book of John 15, verse 3, Jesus said that you are already clean by the words that I have spoken to you. So when you hear the word of God and take it into action and live by the word of God and walk by the word of God, definitely you become holy. Very many people are saying no one is perfect, no one is holy. But I want to tell you the truth. It is possible to be holy when you keep yourself in the area of learning and studying and walking and depending on the word of God daily. Praise the Lord. Verse 27 says, That he might present it to himself as glorious church, not having spot, nor wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank God for this. And I'm very happy. I've read just 26 and 27. But you can go and read the whole chapter of Ephesians chapter 5. But let me show you why we should be holy in the spirit, soul, and body. Do you know that Jesus is coming back? Let us read the scripture in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, to prove that we have to be holy. We have to be blameless, spotless, wrinklelessness. To be wrinkleless, praise the Lord. In the spirit, soul, and body. Okay, let us go there in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is coming back, we have to be holy. And we have to be found blameless, spotless, and without wrinkle in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very possible to be holy because we have the Holy Spirit in us who can teach us, who can cleanse us, who can make us to stand in the covenant of the blood of Jesus Christ. So let us not, let us not mum around. To keep on saying things are not going to work, we can't be holy. No one is holy. I want to tell you it's possible because holiness is a requirement. May God continue to bless you. Amen. I love you.